Hello, everyone. I'm Musun Hong from Brass Group at MIT. I'm really honored to present about my research at Bioprocessing Virtual Event. Today, I'll present about my research on macroscopic modeling of bioreactors for recombinant protein producing picapastoris in defined medium. To begin with explaining biopharmaceuticals, which are also widely known as biologics, they are products derived from biological organisms for treating or preventing diseases. The global sales of biopharmaceuticals have continuously increased for many years, and they are projected to reach about $450 billion by last year. Percentage of biopharmaceuticals in the drug pipeline have also continuously increased, resulting in hundreds of approved products on the market, including monoclonal antibodies and other recombinant products, and over 7,000 medicines in development. Traditional biopharmaceutical manufacturing consists of a similar sequence of batch unit operations that are divided into upstream and downstream. For example, the figure in the slide shows a process flow diagram for a typical platform used for producing monoclonal antibodies. The upstream unit operations include cell culture with a series of batch bioreactors and harvest steps, which are centrifugation and filtration in this case. The downstream consists of purification with multiple steps of chromatography, filtration, and diafiltration. There are several trends in biopharmaceutical manufacturing, and these are providing important roles for process system engineers like myself. First, the growth of biologics increased interest in applying process analytical technology, PAT. PAT is a system of analyzing manufacturing through the online measurements of critical quality attributes to ensure the final product quality. Online measurements provide much more data on the multivariable interactions and dynamics, and depending on the process understanding, these data have been used to construct first principles and database models for each of the unit operations. Another trend is a transition of many processes from batch to continuous operation. This batch to continuous transition mirrors a recent trend of chemically dry pharmaceutical manufacturing for reducing manufacturing costs and increasing productivity and quality. The continuous manufacturing processes provide new process control problems to handle the propagation of impurities and other disturbances caused by the tight integration of continuous general operations. Another area of interest is the invention of new designs for protein separations. Currently, the dominant method is pec bed chromatography due to its high resolution, but this method is costly for high-dose pharmaceuticals. So, the non-chromatography separation methods are becoming more attractive as more than bioreactors are achieving higher product titers. And crystallization is one of the more promising proposed technologies. This will be a major shift in biopharmaceutical manufacturing and will involve new processes to be controlled. So my research topics deal with the challenges related to these recent trends in biopharmaceutical manufacturing and can be also divided into upstream and downstream. For upstream, I have constructed mathematical models for multiple bioreactor configurations, including microbioreactor systems and stirred tank bioreactors. And for downstream, I'm working on model-based design and control for bioseparation processes, including continuous brown activation and crystallization. In the interest of time, for today's talk, I'll be presenting the work on macroscopic modeling of stirred tank bioreactors. Start with bioreactor models in general. They are developed based on the data received from the bioreactor runs. Then these bioreactor models inform understanding of cellular metabolism, such as growth kinetics, productivity, and media consumption. These further understanding can be also used to optimize the bioreactor operations, which feeds back to the bioreactor runs. The bioreactor models are developed with different levels of details and complexity depending on their purpose. There are complex cellular models like genomic scale metabolic models, 
which describe detailed cellular metabolism using the data on gene expression. However, these models have too many parameters, and most of the parameters are highly uncertain, even with additional assumptions like steady-state metabolic fluxes. In contrast, macroscopic models give reasonable description of the bioreactor with simpler mathematical formulations at low computational cost. These type of models can also facilitate real-time application, such as adaptive primary estimation and model predictive control. Cell considered for the bioreactor modeling was Pitcap Pastoris. Pitcap Pastoris is methotropic yeast, which is widely used as the microbial host for recombinant protein production. The system has the advantages of tight gene regulation and high product titer with methylene-induced alkyl oxidase promoter, growth on simple media at high cell density with preference for respiratory growth, eukaryotic post-translational modification, such as glycosylation and disulfine bond formation, and simplified downstream purification with foreign protein secretion and low amount of naturally secreted proteins. In this work, an extensive macroscopic bioreactor model was constructed not only for substrates, biomass, and recombinant protein, but also for other medium components and off-gas components like oxygen and carbon dioxide. Modeling the medium components was facilitated by using a chemically defined medium, which also reduces run-to-run -run variability and simplifies downstream purification processes. Additionally, pH model was constructed based on overall charge balance, acid-base equilibria, and activity coefficients to describe the dependence of recombinant protein production on pH, precipitation of medium components, and carbon dioxide to carbonate species reaction. The model parameters with those uncertainty were collected from the literature, and the distribution of uncertain parameters were estimated from the maximum likelihood method. Looking into the model development, bioreactors have been traditionally modeled as third tank chemical reactors. The material balance is set up as an equation in the slide, which is in terms of the concentration of species of interest. In this equation, delta term is a separation factor specifying the concentration in the outlet. For biomass concentration, delta term is equal to 1 for fat batch operation and 0 for perfusion operation. Our term is the volumetric reaction rate, including both biological and chemical reactions. And biological reaction rate models can be classified as unstructured or structured and non-segregated or segregated model. The macroscopic model was developed as an unstructured and non-segregated model, which means that the cell population is treated as single component and all cells are considered to be identical. Differential balances for concentration of biomass, substrates, which are glycerol and methanol, and total proteins, including both recombinant protein and whole cell proteins, are given as the equations on the left of the slide. The specific growth rate is modeled to be proportional to the specific substrate consumption rate minus the maintained coefficient, and the specific substrate consumption rate is modeled with the most commonly used Monod equation. The specific production and whole cell protein secretion rates are lumped together and modeled to be proportional to the specific growth rate. Also, it was observed that the pH of the medium affects the total protein concentration. To consider this effect of the pH, it was assumed that a hypothetical enzyme is responsible for the secretion of proteins and it is only active in its original deprotonated form. Then the active portion of total enzyme is described with the equation given in the slide, and its proportion is included into the specific total production rate. Biomass composition of Piquet Pastoris has been reported from several past studies, and there was a study which reported the biomass composition under different oxygenation conditions 
as well as on the recombinant protein producing and non-producing conditions. As we can see from the plots in the slide, the study showed that the control strain resulted in a fairly constant level of protein and carbohydrate under all oxygenation conditions, a recombinant protein producing strain resulted in significant increase in protein and decrease in carbohydrate as the oxygen availability decreased. This variation in macromolecular composition led to increase in carbon and nitrogen composition. At the same time, extracellular and intracellular content of recombinant protein also significantly increased when the oxygen availability was reduced. These results suggest that the recombinant protein production is correlated with a variation in macromolecular and chemical compositions. So concentrations of intracellular carbon and nitrogen were included as a states in the model and were modeled based on the mass balance of biomass. And in this model, the specific carbon dioxide evolution rate and specific nitrogen uptake rate were modeled to be proportional to the specific growth rate. Moving on to the medium components, rich defined medium components include total phosphate, sulfate, ammonium, glutamine, and arginine species, and also potassium, magnesium, calcium, transition metals, and chloride. The differential balances for these components include the terms for specific uptake rate and precipitation and dissolution rate. For nitrogen sources, ammonium, glutamine, and arginine, they can be utilized simultaneously by Pitya Pastoris. Actual nitrogen regulation will be complicated, but here we simplify the model so that the nitrogen sources are utilized based on their molar ratio of nitrogen. For the components without nitrogen, the specific uptake rates are modeled assuming the constant elemental compositions. This is consistent with the results in the literature, which reported constant sulfur and ashes composition under different operating conditions. And precipitation caused by medium components is one of several common problems in the cell culture media. So a pH model with precipitation was developed with the medium components. For the general description, acid-based species are described as A, and remaining species are described as S, with subscripts meaning the different species. Then the base of pH model is from the total charge balance and acid-base equilibria. For acid-base equilibria, activity is applied instead of concentration because ionic strength can be high during the bioreactor operation. So the activity is modeled with the Davis equation, which is simple and known to be valid up to 0.5 molar concentration of ionic strength. Precipitate species are described with given precipitation reaction in the slide, and the differential balance is formulated similarly with the medium components, but with opposite sign for the precipitation rate. Precipitation rate is described with given expression in the slide, and reaction rate constants are set to be large number to assume fast kinetics. For the gas phase of the bioreactor, there are homogeneously dispersed bubbles and his phase gas above the liquid medium. These two gas phases can be modeled as third tanks connected in series, but actually it is reasonable to lump them as a sole gas phase. Gas transfer between his phase and liquid is negligible compared to the gas transfer between bubbles and liquid because of the order of magnitude smaller surface area. So there is negligible difference between two phases. Then differential balance for mole fraction of oxygen and carbon dioxide is expressed as given in this equation. The most important term that has to be modeled in this expression is the gas transfer. Oxygen transfer is especially important for systems with peak capacitors because of the high oxygen uptake rate at high cell density. The bioreactor is designed to diffuse oxygen from sparge bubbles into the bulk liquid. Oxygen transfer rate can be calculated from differential balance for concentration of dissolved oxygen, and scaling analysis shows that the term with concentration of dissolved oxygen can be neglected 
due to the low solubility of oxygen in liquid medium. Carbon dioxide produced from the cell metabolism is diffused in the opposite direction with oxygen from the bulk liquid to sparge bubbles. Carbon dioxide transfer rate can be also calculated from differential balance for concentration of dissolved carbon dioxide, but the approximation that was used for oxygen is not applicable because of its high solubility. Instead, considering that the gas transfer rate and volumetric mass transfer coefficient for oxygen and carbon dioxide are same order of magnitude, concentration of dissolved carbon dioxide can be approximated to a saturated concentration. <clears throat> and unlike oxygen, dissolved carbon dioxide converts into carbon species with the following chemical reactions, so these were also taken into account in the model. For oxygen uptake rate, metabolic flux model was introduced based on the division of metabolic flux into anabolism and energy metabolism. Glycerol and methyl metabolism was simplified as given in these reaction networks, and oxygen yield coefficients for anabolism and energy metabolism were calculated from these reaction networks. For primary estimation needed for the model, maximum likely estimation was applied. Maximum likely estimation is commonly used in the literature, assuming that there exists a constant primary vector for all experimental data sets. In this case, the model equation for the system is expressed as these equations, and the maximum likely estimation is formulated as its minimization problem. However, in this work, the primaries were estimated, assuming that there exists a distribution of primaries between different experimental data sets. This was to describe the variations that was observed between individual experiments, even with highly similar target operating conditions with controlled temperature, pH, and dissolved oxygen. In this case, the model equation for the system is expressed with constant primaries for each of the experimental data set, which have the following distributions. Then, the variance for the states can be approximately described by a function of primary distribution, sensitivity, and the measurement noise. And finally, the maximum likely estimation is formulated as this minimization problem, optimizing with respect to both mean and variance of the parameters. From here, I'll present the results of the macroscopic, bi macroscopic bioreactor model. In the bioreactor runs, it was observed that the precipitation occurred when base ammonium hydroxide was added for pH adjustment before the inoculation. And magnesium ammonium phosphate was identified as candidate precipitate because the medium component measurement before and after the pH adjustment showed that the ammonium and phosphate are included in the precipitate. This plot shows the pH model predictions with precipitation as solid line without precipitation as dashed line, and experimental data as open circles. Experimental data are pH measurements of rich D5 medium as base ammonium hydroxide is added. For the model prediction, acid dissociation constants were taken from the literature, and the solubility product was estimated with these squares. And we can see from the plot that the pH data of rich D5 medium at different base concentrations are well described by the pH model with precipitation. The experimental data also show that the precipitation occurred when about 0.3 to 0.4% of base was added, which again shows good agreement with the model prediction. Well, in this slide shows a comparison of macroscopic bioreactor model predictions with bioreactor run data on biomass concentration. Again, the solid line shows the model predictions, and the open circles show the experimental data from the bioreactor runs. Vertical dashed lines represent times when the operation mode changed, first from glycerol batch to glycerol fat batch, and then to methanol fat batch. Fermentation was carried out with PK pastoris, secreting P4 or PA serotype of a non-replicating with virus, the P8 derived subunit vaccine. For operating conditions, temperature was 25 degrees Celsius, and pH was different run by run, 
varying between 4 and 6.5. Also in some fermentation, a pH pulse was implemented at the end of methylene adaptation. This brought pH down to 3 to reduce the degradation of protein by inactivating proteases. Primaries required for the growth and substrate consumption were taken from the literature, and we can see from the plot that the biomass data with different pH conditions and different strains are well described by the macroscopic model. The plot on this slide show the comparison of the model predictions with data on total protein concentration. The plot on the left shows the total protein concentration with the pH condition of each of the bioreactor runs given in the plot on the right. Parameters for the total protein production were estimated with a maximum likelihood method. And we can see from the plots that the total protein data are well described by the macroscopic model, but have more variability compared to the biomass concentration. Total protein production during glycerol period is fairly consistent since most of the proteins produced are whole cell proteins. Run-term variability of total protein production occurred mainly during methylene period due to the recombinant protein production. This may be described by the unmeasured cell properties such as viability and copy number variation. And pH dependence of the total protein concentration is evident from the concentration for different pH conditions during the glycerol period and trend of the concentration before and after the pH shift during the methylene period. This, this dependence suggests that the lowering pH for inactivating proteases can actually negatively affect the quantitative productivity. The plot on this slide shows a comparison of the model predictions with data on concentration of medium components. For phosphate and ammonium, data with low pH conditions were only used because of precipitation and higher pH conditions. Parameters for elemental compositions were estimated with maximum likelihood method, and estimated values reasonably agree with the values from the literature. The phosphate and potassium data are well described by the macroscopic model, which demonstrates that the constant elemental composition is reasonable assumption. On the other hand, ammonium data have more run-term variability compared to the other medium components. Again, Run-term availability of ammonium consumption occurred mainly during the methanol period. This is when the intracellular concentration of nitrogen increased due to the recombinant protein production. For the gas phase, the plots on this slide show the comparison of the model predictions with data on off-gas composition of oxygen and carbon dioxide. Primaries for carbon composition were estimated with maximum likelihood method. An estimated value for initial carbon composition during glycerol period reasonably agree with the values from the literature. The off-gas data are well described by the macroscopic model, which demonstrates that the metabolic flux model for oxygen uptake rate is reasonable simplification. However, sudden increase was observed in both oxygen uptake rate and carbon dioxide evolution rate at the beginning of the methylene induction, causing disagreement between model prediction and experimental data. This means that the actual cell metabolism was more focused on energy metabolism than what was predicted from the model. This may be due to dramatic changes in cell metabolism for methylene adaptation. And finally, with these results, the macroscopic biotin model with pH and precipitation can be implemented and compared with the entire biotin runs data as shown in these plots. We can see that including precipitation into the macroscopic biotin model resulted in good agreement of model predictions and experimental data of medium components and pH. Model prediction for medium components with pH and precipitation can be also applied for improving the chemically defined medium. This can be done by minimizing the amount of the components needed while still meeting cellular requirements, which is important for extended operations in perfusion. Furthermore, the effects of primary distributions estimated from the maximum likelihood method 
can be quantified by the probability distribution function. The plots in this slide show the probability distribution functions constructed by Monte Carlo simulation with 10,000 random primary sets sampled from the primary distributions. We can see that the primary distribution functions capture the run-to-run -run variability in experimental data, especially for total protein and ammonium concentration. Sensitivity analysis identifies key primaries for the states of interest. The plots in this slide show the sensitivities of states of the macroscopic biotin model with respect to the related primaries. For example, let's take a look into the sensitivity of ammonium concentration. We can see that the ammonium concentration is highly sensitive to inlet-based concentration because of its high concentration and continuous input. This indicates that the inlet-based concentration should be accurately identified to apply the macroscopic model to the experimental data. To conclude, this work constructed an extensive macroscopic bioreactive model for PK pastoris, describing substrates, biomass, total protein, other medium components, off-gas components, and pH. And model prediction from the constructed model well described experimental data with different operating conditions. Furthermore, the probability distribution of model predictions from the primary distribution quantify the run-term variability observed in the experimental data. With that, I would like to acknowledge my coworkers and Funding Source Case Foundation, and also thank you all for your attention.